We're good to go, man. How you doing? I'm blessed, man. I'm doing really good, bro. No just, complaints. Just chilling? Yeah, to the, for a little bit. Yeah, and then I got a studio session after this. Oh, okay, okay. So you have to, you got to be here, out of here in like an hour or so. Something like that. No, I'm, I'm in no like major rush, man. I, okay. My session's not until like 1, 1 p.m., so. Oh, okay, okay. We cool, we cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, it's crazy. So like the thing is me and Daniel, uh, a mutual um, you know, person that connected us. He, uh, so what we do is we usually, uh, talk about who we going to bring on next for our guests and stuff like that. Yeah. And he was just like, yo, we should bring on T on Gibbs. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I didn't, I wasn't too familiar with you. Word. I didn't really know who you were. And then I had to do some research and I was like, what the fuck, man? How do I not know this guy? This guy's dope, <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, I'm pretty like I, I like to say I'm like pretty in tune with like the Vancouver scene in terms of artists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was really surprised that I didn't know about you, man. Um, so just to, you know, start off and get right into it. What uh, and for people that don't really know about you and aren't too familiar, where did, you know, the music start and your journey and stuff like that and. Uh, just take us through it since day one, you know? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I've been making music probably for like like 15 years, roughly. Shit. Um, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing it for a long time. And um, I guess professionally trying to pursue things as Tion Gibbs as an artist, probably um, four years now that i've been doing this okay. um so i well i guess five because it's 2021 so yeah 2016 i, I became tion gibbs mm -hmm. um but prior to that yeah man I, i've been working on music and writing music since i was since i was a young and um a lot of it had to do with my traveling so mm -hmm. my family moved around a lot so that was kind of just something that i did as a creative outlet and also just to get my thoughts somewhere was um mm. was, was music so that's that's kind of what, what how it all started right. and then uh, i remember back in the days man just like i used to grab like headphones and, like used to like record into the headphone into right. like uh, into like my dad's laptop before i had like a setup just so i could hear kind of like what it would sound like to be on a track and then right. over time i just started picking up gear here and there and then it kind of right. just became a passion that shit was OG, yeah, for sure. A lot of yeah. people started off with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you sure. would say you would say it was like an outlet because you moved around so much that it was just sort of like how you expressed it, expressed your thoughts and your emotions into music. Yeah, you know, like, because if every, like, two, three years I have, I'm moving to a new place, um, right. it's kind of hard to maintain friendships. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's, like, Facebook and that kind of stuff, but, I mean, it's different when it's, like, you see someone in real life. Mm -hmm. um so for me i was like all right well i have i have these you know thoughts and on i i mean things that mattered to me i was talking about girls when i was like i don't know like 14 and then like <laughs> you know like just shit like that so then it was, for me it was just like all right i'm gonna put this into lyrics um and then that's kind of how it all started word word so did you start by making like just like making raps and like lyrics or were you producing as well um yeah i started by making raps and lyrics right um like the production stuff probably came in a little bit later okay okay yeah so it's crazy i like when i had to research you and um look into your stuff you actually got um you know featured in the article for complex canada uh, yeah. for it was uh the top um songs of 2020 and it was like dudes like drake Justin Bieber on yeah, there, yeah. shit like that. So what was, like, how was that experience? Like, when you found out, was it? Yeah, know, that was different? dope, man. I uh, I did not see that coming, man. Like, Complex, um, like, the more prestigious, like, blogs, they're, like, hard to get, man, to get mm -hmm. featured. And I didn't actually know anything about that one. Um, that kind of just came full, sac full circle, and, and, and they featured us. Um yeah. So I, I had no idea that was coming. So that was like a really dope surprise. And yeah, when I went through the list, man, it wasn't like a dud list of like obscure artists that nobody knows. It was like, shit, dude. Like, cause I was like, right, right when life is good, it just come out too. Yeah, facts, yeah. You know, and I was like, bro, like this is crazy that we're on the same list as this song. So um, 
yeah like it was it was really cool for me like I, I you know it's, it's shit like that that like i don't know i'm when you're like trying to do anything entrepreneurial or like trying to do anything creative like it's hard man you know it's, it's a tough grind and it's just shit like that that like keeps you motivated because mm. you're like all right okay cool just progress so, like we're, we're making headway 100 percent. like just like yeah. little recognitions on the way you know just to like keep yeah. you encouraged and stuff like that you know exactly bro that's crazy that probably fucking killed like that just like helped your brand so much right probably yeah 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 because um as soon as that happened um you know a lot more blogs and articles started hitting me up to do work um it was just a really fucking dope way to start 2020 as far as like just brand strength right so so i was i was super hype on that man right so like the song is called casting call and um there's a few artists on the song so there's i wrote them down b dice junk snotty nose res kids lilo key and you so and every okay so every everyone beside lilo are from the west coast lilo is actually from new york city so yeah how did you guys end up like meeting up how was that collaborative process you know like how did that come about yeah so um b dice who I actually went to audio school with, so I've known him for a, for a minute. Um, he hit me up and he was like, "Yo, man, um, I want to do this like compilation, like kind of like a like a posse cut, you know, track where like we get a bunch of different artists to you know just spit on the same song." So um, he hit me up and he already had uh, Snotty Nose Res Kids because I guess he knew them personally. Um, so they were already down and he already knew Lilo Key. And at the time he's like, yeah, I want to try to get you and Junk through the last spots. Um, and it was, it was, it was, it was just like a, I have a little home set up at home. So I just wrote my little, my little verse and I sent it in. Um, and I had no idea the order or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was, uh, I wish that we could have all been in the studio together. That would have been a really dope experience. But yeah, no, I was, I was just a straight up, like I just kind of mailed that one in. Damn. You know, I uh, spent a lot of time writing it though, because my typical brand of hip hop is not like the super lyrical, miracle, spiritual kind right, of right. stuff. Yeah. Like that's, but, um, you know, I knew, I knew that's what a lot of those guys were going to be on as that kind of vibe so i was like all right okay well i'll 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 try i'll make sure that i I, you know i do my thing on it you know and i can uh, have a good moment yeah i didn't know you guys didn't even actually meet up in the studio it was just like everyone's like in their own place and you just send it in yeah exactly man we all just sent it in and there was a bunch of like there's a couple calls you know what i'm saying like yo yo you gotta listen to junk's verse check it out okay the snotty rose verse just came in like yeah, we're all yeah. like we're all calling each other and it, it's it's cool it, the nice thing about posse cuts is like it, people get competitive which is dope mm. you know so like you everyone nobody wants to be that guy who's like oh you got washed on the song you know no one wants to be that guy mm, right like okay it's the same time, like no one's shitting on each other either. You know what I mean? Like no one's like trying to like let everybody know that the next artist is not good. But um, it's just I think it's just human nature, man. Like you want to have a special moment on a song like that. So for sure, yeah. You want your you want your verse to be like you know. Yeah, like, I want to be a memorable standout kind of thing. Right? Exactly. That's crazy. That was actually one of the things I was gonna ask you. Like, would was was there any like conflict between each other? You know, what I mean? but it's just the competitive spirit. It comes out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the only competitive thing. spirit. You know, it's kind of like um, you remember that 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 control track that came out like 2013. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, it's crazy because like everyone always talks about the the, the Kendrick verse, obviously, because it was like it was wild. Mm. But um, but Big Sean's verse was like super dope on that track. Hundred percent. Yeah, and like if you listen to Jay Electronica's verse is also dope too. It's just you know. Shit. So everybody just wants to have that moment, you know what I mean? Where it's like, no, no, I shut the track down. So right. Do you, yeah. do you think like once you get like that big, like you know, on like Kendrick's like level, on like Big Sean, all like Drake, ASAP Rocky, all those dudes, do you think they're still competitive in the sense that like they want their verse to be like the hottest on the track, or it's just like very like you yeah. know what I mean? You know, I think I think it really depends on the person. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like. I think it depends on the person how much you love this shit, you know. Mm. I think uh, what was that? That what did Drake say on Gold Roses? He was like, 10 years in, you get to hear my most impressive verses." Yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, that's cool, man. Like, 
you really gotta love this shit to to like continue to want to be the best. So I I think certain people are built like that. I think I think a Kendrick is built like that for sure. I think a Drake, whenever Drake's on songs with other rappers, like he's he's definitely built like that. I think so. Mm, yeah, for sure, Drake. I feel like yeah. Yeah, he's he's different, man. That guy's he his output is crazy, bro. And like the fact that the quality is maintaining such a high level of quality it's like mind-blowing to me bro mm. it's it's crazy man like i mean he he claims that he writes his own raps and stuff and i do believe it but there's a lot of talk about the gross writing shit and like to be honest like even there even if there is he, there's no one that can deliver like him so i don't even you know what i mean like so it really depends yeah. on the artist too like even if like a different artist got the same like lyrics they wouldn't be able to deliver like him no definitely not man i mean you know my guy is speaking arabic on songs now dog. Uh, he, <laughs> he, 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 he went full french on greece and shit like that yeah, like, bro it's crazy man like this guy's gonna be speaking to galug and try to talk about <laughs> student, bro i'm telling you man it's, straight up man i guys to go but yeah, he, he's fucking an animal dog yeah man um so let's i'm gonna talk about the album bro your project these are the times i actually just listened to it yesterday the whole thing um it came out in 2018 and Mm -hmm. you know what's crazy man like throughout the whole album i like you know caught on different like vibes like kendrick chance um from your like from your vibe and like your your flow and shit like that and um which two of them are like the most like lyrical geniuses right yeah so my thing is like i'm actually genuinely one like interested and curious to know like what is the creative process into making an album like from the very first moment you step into the studio until the very last moment where you actually release it like what is what goes into it what what's your thought process oh man it's it's uh it's it's a lot bro there's a lot (laughs) like a lot of work that goes into it it's a lot of just like trying to find consistency that's the toughest part man is like finding songs that go together and like just you know whether you're producing it or whether you're working with other producers like really a and ring the sound um that's the trickiest part because you want like I mean, obviously you can have variety and shit like you can have like touch on different genres but i do think it's like when you listen to a especially when you become a larger artist and people are actually listening to song one all the way through to song, mm. whatever the last song is, it's like, you do want there to be like a pretty consistent vibe so that people can kind of catch it. Um, for me, um, I've uh, so far, I've gone for like conceptual sound albums as opposed to um, a conceptual narrative mm. for an album. So um I, you know, these are the times was essentially me saying, you know what, man, I want to take um, production that you would hear at like a club or you would hear on like a, some rap from like, you know, Atlanta or some shit like that. Mm. And I just want to kind of like just be honest on it and just be myself mm. on it and, and speak from, you know, a dude who is um, living in Vancouver right now and like talk about my journey and my story mm. uh in in my own way um because i because i because the one knock people always gave especially at that time uh when that project came out because i was kind of like at the peak of like mumble rap right mm-hmm. was um a lot of people were given a knock about dope production it carries these songs and rappers aren't spitting anymore and um you know, I, I found like, yo, you can find great pockets and like great flows that sound good. Um, if you just put a little bit more work in it too, you can actually say some some like fairly intellectual shit on it as well. Mm. So that was kind of my goal with it. Um, you know, so that, that project had 10 songs on it and I probably made like 18, 19 songs for that project. Oh, okay. And then I just whittled it down to the the 10 that I thought were the most consistent. consistent. Um, but like my creative process as far as like writing, um, usually I find a beat. If if the shit like starts slapping and I'm like, I'm rapping or singing along to it right away and I have a shit ton of ideas, I'll probably finish that song in like an hour or two. An hour, fuck. Um, but then there's other songs where it's like, uh, you'll get, you'll start having these little ideas or like flows and stuff. 
but they're not like very like continuous or not they're not like very like i don't know w- well developed mm-hmm. um those are the tricky ones because then those ones can take longer because it, it's, it's you're working from a little bit less inspiration and more hard work um and uh obviously every artist wants to work from inspiration but um if you don't if you don't put in the hard work sometimes you don't you don't you don't you don't get the project done so mm. there's a couple songs on these are the times that um i remember writing the verses and being like okay like i need to be very cerebral with how i like think about these these verses here um you know i think want for me was one of those ones where it was like i need to actually make sure like i'm spitting game you know what i'm saying but mm. i still sound cool on this beat um, and that's like a tough balance to find because when you get too like lyrical, like it kind kind of loses its feel, you know. So yeah. so, uh, but yeah, that, that that's kind of the process there. Um, things are a little bit different now. I don't know if you want to jump to now, but like, um, I mean, yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, I think things, are, things are a little bit different now because um, um, it's my first time working with a like producer for the an entire project. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm working with this cat named Chin, Chin and Jetty right now. Um, and we're working on a, like an album and it's essentially like the sound is going to be more of a continuation of these are the times. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, like we're, we're working on a project right now and it's, it's very, very different because you're in a room with someone who's making beats for you on the fly mm. and like some of them you love and some of them you don't like it's just that's just the way it goes right and it's like someone who with a lot more um a lot more experience than you and a lot more like notoriety he's like he's an award-winning producer right so like right. having to tell him no like you really got to like believe in your art and your direction and so and you really got to have a good ear for what you think you'll sound good on mm. um Cause a lot of, I think a lot of people would just be like, yeah, that sounds dope. Let's work on it right now. And then, so for me to be like, nah, I'm not feeling that one, bro. Let's, let's try and make another one. You know, it's like, man, uh, that, that would take a lot, man. Just to say, yeah. that, like, or, you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. This, this guy's done, he's got, he's already accomplished so much. So yeah. Um, damn. Okay. So that's like, but it works out at the end. You know what I mean? Cause it's a, you yeah, guys both no. trust each other. Cause it's trust there, you know? Exactly, man. And, and right now, um, I, I can fully say that I'm, I'm probably making some of the best music I've, I've, I've made in my life right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just cool knowing um, that the deeper we get in the process, the more shit I'm going to learn from him as far as like, you know, vocal production. And as far as even like, even the things like publishing and marketing, like things that, you know, every artist needs to know it can have more insight into, you know, having someone who's like a 20, 30 year vet, doing this shit is like the best source of information so right it's the best you know source of source of like mentorship you can have right 100 percent, man yeah, yeah so. man so it's it's cool man because like when i was listening to the album there was not one song that um you know i would skip and it's funny because there's a lot of like i've had a i've had this debate with a lot of people what what's considered to be a good album you know mm-hmm. and a lot of people say like, you know, if there's 16 songs, at least eight of, you know, half of them have to be good and yeah. so, uh, something you vibe with, right? Yeah. And um, there's some people that you like, you know, consider a good album based on the nostalgia it brings them in terms of, you know, like during that time when I, like, when this album came out, this, like, it was, you know, we were doing this, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was during this time, it was in the summer, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my thing is like, for me, I, I've talked about this before, but my favorite album of all time is the Carter three Lil Wayne. And oh. the re- the reasoning behind that is because it was the summer of grade seven going into grade eight. And it was just a lit summer, man. I remember when the album came out, like <laughs> Lollipop, Got Money, you know, uh, Mr. Carter, all and Millie, all those fucking yeah, tracks. Man. It was just like, it was like a game changer for me. And um, to be honest, there's like some songs on the album that just ass. I don't fuck with them at all. But it's those few songs that are just absolute fucking bangers to me that just makes the fucking album the greatest, in my opinion. So for you, I guess what I'm trying to say is what do you 
look at for an album? Like, does it just need to be consistent throughout? Um, what, you know, constitutes as a good album, if that makes any sense. You yeah, know? no, no, that makes sense, bro. Uh, shit, that's tough, man, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is true, man. Like, sometimes when you have, like, such a strong, like, feeling associated with a project, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it, like, comes out in such a pivotal time in your life, and, like, it's kind of the soundtrack for that summer or that moment in your life, and it's kind of hard to, like, to beat that. And I, I think I have a couple albums like that, that I'm like, shit, man, like, yeah, there's a couple joints on it that, that, that have come out that I'm like, yo, that's that's a classic to me because it was, you know, basically my themes, my, my mm. theme music for a freaking summer. It was the anthem, you know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's so many joints like that where you're like, shit, this is, this is me. Um, but I, I do think on a more technical aspect, like, yeah, I think like, like you said, man, like it's, it comes down to skippables. You know, if a project mm. has too many skippable songs, and th- there's a difference between skippables and then there's like actual like ass trash songs. You yeah, know what I'm saying yeah. like, like there's some there's some albums that I consider classics that when I listen to it, sometimes I'm like, ah, okay, I'm kind of bored of this song now, and I skip it. But then there's like actually like booty songs that I'm like, <laughs> you have too many booty songs on your album, I can't, I I can't call it a classic. Yeah, that's yeah. just me. Um, but yeah, man, like what are some classics in my opinion? Um, I think I think College Dropout is a classic. I think mm-hmm. it's a classic 100%. album. Um, I know a lot of people say Drake doesn't have a classic, but I think nothing was the same. That's my, actually my favorite Drake project. Uh, that's, um, that's mine too, yep. Yeah, I yep. think that's a classic, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Good Kid, Mad City to me, that's a classic. Okay. I'm not, uh, Kendrick's not, you know, you know, my, nah, I mean he he's got some you know he's got some good, like obviously he's got some bangers but yeah just uh in terms of sound he's not really my go-to but nothing was the same I would agree with you on that man it's yeah. it's yeah. just so it's just like like that's the thing for me it was the time it came out um man it was just the vibe man it's just so, it, so I remember that summer that's what I'm saying I remember that summer let me listen to that album I was like shit man this guy yeah. Drake is truth He's he that's and the thing is it's crazy. He um went on the went on an interview, he went live and saying that it was his like that's his that's his favorite project for sure in terms of like consistency from top to bottom, you know. Yeah. So it's cool to you know relate to that. And it's crazy, like I've got I actually went back to um recently went back to 808 Heartbreak, Kanye and Fucking fire. Dude, it, it, like some of those songs I didn't like back then it's just like it's one of my, it's like more like those are like my favorite songs now you know what i mean yeah, like it's bad it's news good. bad news robocop all those like bro it's such a good album dog and you know what? I, it's funny you said that because i album the same thing when it first came out there's a couple of joints on there that i didn't love that much mm. um but like i think just because it was so far ahead of its time you know what i'm saying and it, it's basically the blueprint for like modern r&b music you know what I'm facts, saying? Facts, facts. So like, I think now that our ears are a bit more like acclimated to like that sound in general, you go back and like, shit, man, this guy was on some cutting edge shit. This is crazy. Fuck. Yeah, this is such a dope album, man. Head of um, his time, like you said, man. Fuck. Yeah. And uh, like, oh, Bryson Tiller's album Trap Soul. To me, that's a classic, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love, okay. I love that album, bro. Um, yeah. So it's just like, yeah, I think it. You can't have too many. Like you can have. I think you get away with like one song that's like considered a bad song and then you can have maybe one or two skippables but the rest has got to be like pretty consistent if you have like 15 songs on the track. yeah 100 100 percent. yeah in terms of like skippable i'm not like it, it's basically how i would say is like i wouldn't voluntarily go and like choose it on my list but if it came on in the shuffle i would be like Excellent. you know what I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it for three minutes but yeah. you know i wouldn't actively go and pick it but um yeah man so <sighs> let's talk about performing um i've always wondered yeah. you've performed a lot obviously yeah um and i've always wondered you know what artists think before going on stage and for me i personally man like thinking about it gives me anxiety <laughs> because of like you know i'd be fucking out of my mind i would have a heart attack i would probably cancel the show because oh, for real for me man like it's just like i overthink things so i would think about all the things that would go wrong and could go wrong and there's a lot 
in like performing i guess like in terms of just like you know technical issues you know forgetting i don't know i would i feel like i would forget my own lyrics you know crowd reaction all that shit man so like take us through you know the preparation going on stage during all like whatever you feel man like what is that like what is that experience yeah Yeah, dog yeah i I, um i feel you on that though man like there there is a lot that can go wrong bro there is a lot and like at the end of the day like i've I've been on stage and things have gone wrong you know like you're like halfway through a verse and your microphone cuts and then and then the sound guy is not or he's not around and you and then you know that shit like that that like if if you don't like understand like what goes into a live show or you're not a performer um you just think the artist is like it's the artist's fault you don't actually realize that there's a lot of shit in the back end Mm. so i do feel you there's a lot of stuff like that that can go wrong um but at the end of the day man like you 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 just can't focus on that that's what i've learned to do man it's like just focus on the things that i can't control Mm. um and i think your strongest ally is preparation um for me that's the biggest thing like i'm never nervous for a show whether it's you know playing for a thousand people or playing for a hundred people as long as i know like yeah i know my shit like i'm gonna kill it like Mm. if if i'm not prepared then i get nervous like if it's a brand new song and like we only i've only done it you know a few times Mm. like that that shit makes me nervous man and i think it's uh it does come down a lot to um I think the biggest thing for me, the only thing that makes me nervous is like lyrics. I take a long time to memorize lyrics. Mm. Um, so that that's one thing for sure that that I that I would be nervous about. But um, but like I just I, like I said, man, preparation is your best friend, dog. Like mm. I put in all some serious work, man. Like I, at this point now, my catalog is so big that like I wouldn't even introduce a new song into uh, a live set rotation unless I'm like fully confident. And I I know it backwards four is up and down right so mm. for me for me I'm, I'm, I'm blessed in that way and and, and, I, and I, I make sure i put on damn good shows dog yeah because um, too many artists they don't capitalize on the opportunity to be in front of people and and, and, mm. and win them over that way and um you know it makes me sad bro i sometimes i go to these shows and i see like other rappers i'm like bro you're, like it's just the track playing man like, yeah man not even yeah. rapping at all dog it's a, it's there's a very select few that know how to perform there's a very yeah. select few and it's just it's crazy like it, i'm waiting for you know those like I, there's some rappers i've seen live where i'm just like man you gotta like get me hype you know like it, half of it's performance you know yeah for sure like, man you know and um what you said about like you know just the preparation and stuff and at the end of the day dude it's like they're the crowd is there to see you, you know what I mean? There's a reason why they're there. So, um, you know, that's, I feel like that's a mentality I would use if I was to perform, you know? Yeah, man, 100%, dog. So, um, I I feel like performance is like a playoff game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you, it's like, it's make or break, dog. Like this is Mm -hmm. game seven. You know, like we, if we don't win this game or we don't impress the people here, like, oh, they're not, they're not going to come back to, to watch us in the next series. Facts, facts. But, I mean, there's uh, there's four other people on the court with you, you know what I mean? In basketball, mm-hmm. right? So Yeah. But it's... for me, I, a lot of a lot of my shows, I have, like, a, a full band behind me, bro. Like, I, have, okay. I have drums. I have keyboards. I have, you know, electric guitars. I have two backup vocalists a lot of the time. So Okay, yeah. yeah. So, like, we, we try to do, like, an actual, like, full full production. Right, um, right. So you put a you put a lot of time into it. Yeah, we put a lot of time into it, man. Because I, I I've just learned that like that's the thing that people will always remember. Like some people, there's a lot of times people will be like, "Yo, I don't even know, I didn't even know who that dude was, but I came to that show and it was crazy." Mm. And you know, like I will always remember that show, and that's uh that's the dopest way, that's the dopest feeling for me to have mm. people win like, like win people over like that. That's huge, especially if like crazy that's the best compliment and like if you're opening for another guy too and yeah you know people go home saying yo the tion guy that opened for so-and-so fuck it that was that crazy guy, yeah that yeah. was the best performance of the night you know yeah 100 percent, man that's 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 what you want man you want to bring that kind of energy bro so um for sure for sure you got I mean, any up every opportunity you gotta you gotta be memorable bro at every opportunity so every every fucking performance do you think guys like 
you know, that have made it and like done thousands of performances, they take the same amount of time going into every performance? Or is it, I mean, is there times where they just say, yo, this one, you know, let's just chill for this or, or is it, you know, especially on tour because it's fucking, it's a grind. Yeah, man. I, I feel like, I feel like everyone has those nights. I'm sure everyone has those nights, you know, you'll have an off night where you'll just be like, bro, I'm tired as fuck. I feel like I got a cold. Like, I don't really want to be here right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll have those off nights. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, freaking, if you have the ability to put on a dope show, like, and you see people, like, so many artists go crazy. Like, I remember Drake had freaking a, a floating Ferrari at his last show. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, you're 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 clearly putting that time and money and energy in because you actually care about this shit so right 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 um so at the end of the day i think it comes all comes back to like how much do you care still as an artist you know yeah exactly man did you ever go to the did you ever go to the kanye concert the pablo one with the floating stage yeah Bro, I, I didn't go man i was cheap about that man look like it looks sick it's one of my biggest regrets man because people that went to that were saying that it was like it was life-changing those were the words they used wow crazy so i mean that guy is crazy and that's crazy man he just fucking literally had a floating stage just one person and he that guy in my opinion is one of he if not the best performer um ever he's he's just like one of the greatest artists ever bro greatest minds too you know yeah and man he's i mean he's he's got some his uh he's been off the you know railings a little bit recently but um i think people i think he's misinterpreted sometimes but <laughs> that's a conversation for fucking another time man i can <laughs> yeah. go but he's uh he's definitely paved the way for a lot of people um and man like so going into like music you obviously you know you're you know you're gonna have your fans you know you're gonna have people that don't fuck with your music at the end of the day that's with anything right yeah, 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 um sense. do you ever think about that do you ever like think about well you know some people won't like it man like are you, i need to like maybe impress this certain type of person or like what is that what is that thought process like man yeah man you know i i used to think about that shit a lot um you know i, I really did um but i i think what's kind of changed in my mentality is just like i can try and make a song that sounds like uh, i don't know travis scott right and everyone you know everyone could love that song and then i'd have to make another song that sounds like travis scott and then everyone could love that song but i i think i'm i'm in a i'm in a spot where i'm and i think a lot of artists are still in this spot like and this is not a shade thing at all mm. but we're like you you take the advice of your peers and your friends so highly but um a lot of times your friends are just going to want to hear what they listen to, like what at the gym and shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're essentially pleasing them. But what I've learned over the years, just growing my brand is like when you start getting the ears of listeners in other cities and other countries, um, they don't know who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. Right. So they hear you on a song. They're going to be like, oh, this is just another dude thinking he's Travis Scott mm. right and if we have one Travis Scott and then we have a bunch of other people who already sound like him who are in the industry and like have a buzz and they're popping mm. who is this independent artist trying to you know replicate this sound which in reality will also probably be you know in two three years that sounds might not even be hot anymore you know what I'm right. saying people might be moving on from it so I realized uh, probably about a year and a half ago that like and I mean, I've always had it to some degree, but like now it's like really ingrained in my head is like, yo, I'm going to work on whatever I think is fucking dope mm -hmm. and whatever I think is like a smart move for my brand and my career and like try to tell my own story and be my own person and have my own sound that's identifiable um, because 
at the end of the day, like you said, man, some people are going to love your shit. Other people are gonna, not going to like it at all. Mm. Right. So I'd rather find success doing something that's genuinely me mm. um, as opposed to finding success being an artist that's like copying another artist or writing some, some, some wave. Mm. Um, because I feel like if you're doing that, you have a, you're a ticking time bomb. That's just all mm, it is. You have, yeah. There's only a certain amount of time before like, okay, this is not hot anymore. Can you rebrand yourself? And you have to do everything all over again? Nah, I'm good, bro. I'd rather just be like, this is who the fuck I am. Mm. Come in, say my shit. You love me or you hate me. That's fine. 100%. But I feel like I feel like people relate to realness at the end of the day, dog. You know what I mean? Hundred mm, percent. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you're, people can sense the genuinity. You know what I mean? Just the yeah. transparency in your in your lyrics and your in your in your vibe and everything. You know what I mean? Because it, it's real. If people know, like, that's the thing. If people can sense, people can sense the 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 phoniness sometimes. You know what I mean? Where they they yeah. know the the rapper's trying to like emulate someone else and really. Yeah just like take someone else's like tone and um i can definitely sense it you know so yeah yeah i appreciate that man it's like when when i listen to like like nipsey interviews like oh he when you really think about nipsey's timeline to like drop in um victory lap Mm. it's fucking long bro like it's a really long time of just grinding and being consistent and like maintaining like yo i'm keeping the same energy i'm gonna be me i'm gonna be who i am Mm -hmm. and and like it's a long time so it may take you longer but when you get there like you know it's it's, it's just all the more beautiful you know what i'm saying so mm. i just think like i, I look at Nip- nipsey was like he's like a big big example for me for like just maintaining i guess i, I think he's one of the goats for doing that bro mm. he just did his own thing man. he really did, he really didn't give a fuck you know yeah uh, yeah which, which is ill yeah i mean there's a lot of guys that come out of Vancouver, man, and there's a lot of talent. That's the thing. There's a lot of talent. Um, Who are some and, of your favorite artists in Vancouver? Oh, I mean, Manila Gray. Yeah. Uh, uh, just started listening to Boslin. Okay, cool. Dope. Um, I, uh, one of my former teammates in basketball, Dan CP. Okay, uh, cool. You, uh, you, you know who that yeah, is? Yeah, he's light skinned dude. He used to have like a like a one yeah, patch yeah. of hair that was a different color. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I listen to his stuff uh, a little bit still. Uh, Crescent. I don't know if you know Crescent. Yeah, yeah I know Crescent. Crescent, yeah, Crescent. Crescent. Yeah. So, I mean, and there's a lot of like younger guys coming out, you know, like just out of high school and shit like that, which is crazy, you know. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, you know, like what's this kid's name? Uh, something played you, Paris. Paris played you or something Paris like that. played you. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard of that kid. He's like a Fil- Filipino kid, right? Filipino kid. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's young. He's a young man, straight out of yeah, high school or some kinda, shit. Kind of sounds like little TJ or something. A little bit. A little gave, gives me a little bit of a Roddy Rich vibe, but yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know the kid. Yeah, man, yeah. and like it's just like it's cool that people are being, you know, creatives and like the production, like the quality is like it's great you know uh, when people yeah so bro i'm telling you man it's, i think it's i think vancouver i genuinely believe this i don't just say this for like cap or to like boost or whatever but like i actually think vancouver has like a low-key dope music scene bro mm. like there's a lot of like artists that when the looks start coming you know like you're like right now you're, you're gonna see probably in the next year or two um I can see Boslin's numbers are going to just continue to like rise. He's on a really good tra- trajectory right now. And same thing with obviously like Wendell and Crescent, like these guys have been grinding as well so that their trajectory is going to be looking good. Mm. But when you get like, I think when you get like five or six artists who have kind of got an actual buzz, like an actual music industry buzz, not just like a Vancouver buzz, mm. um, you're going to see a lot more cats coming out um, from Vancouver who are going to mm. be able to shake things up. Um, like that, like that kid's name, Paris, Paris, Paris got you, right? Is this, this his name? Paris played you. Paris, Paris played you. you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you're going to see more kids like that around his age coming out too. Just taking chances, you know, because a lot of, I feel like a lot of people are like scared to like make that jump and uh, like yeah. doing it. So like seeing a lot of other people doing it, I mean, it's just like inspiring and, you know, pushes them to do it as well, you know? So, That's facts, bro. Man, and like one thing I don't understand though, like I'm trying to figure out is why are there so many artists in Toronto 
that well, in Ontario uh, generally, why, how come there's so many people that come out of there and get so many, so much recognition? I mean, obviously like, Drake paved the way and he's obviously the fucking go, but like guys like The Weeknd, which is my guy, Tory Lanez, Party Next Door, all those guys, like what does Vancouver have to do to, you know, have the next Tory Lanez, have the next weekend uh party next door you know what i mean because there's a lot of cats that have fucking talent here but yeah it's just you know nothing like to that level like what yeah. do you think's missing is if if there is anything missing you know yeah man i i think i so i was on a meeting a few days ago with uh um like music bc and like there's some some cats from like like alberta bc i'm sorry alberta music alberta and stuff like that were on the call and and we were all talking and uh a lot of people were really giving bc a lot of praise for having like probably the best like diy music industry like Mm. um so i think it's just gonna take take a few things to take it to that kind of level i think we're gonna need a couple breakout stars who Mm. actually can't like claim vancouver you know because a lot of and that that's that's my that's my only worry with artists is like it's so hard to make it here um because we don't really have much of an infrastructure so you do have to go to like a toronto or an la to really build your brand out for and that's Mm. kind of the trend that happens with a lot lot, a lot of people Mm. but then the thing is is like it's very easy to be like, because a lot of managers, man, people told me before, yo, it hurts you that you say you're from Vancouver. Like, it hurts your brand. Wow. Like, I've had people in the industry tell me that, and I, I'm sure other artists have heard that, too. So you got to have, like, the mental strength to be like, nah, I don't care about that. I'm still going to rep Vancouver, even if it could hurt some of my opportunities, so that mm. if if and when you get to that kind of a level of influence, you're really able to shed light. So I mm. think it's going to need, like, a few artists like that to you know, like three or four artists like that with, you know, who are actually doing shit to mm. shed light on the Vancouver scene. And then we need infrastructure, man. Like we need a, we need manage, manager presence. We need label presence. Cause there's a lot of like, I mean, I have no idea. Um, Paris play. I don't know him personally. I don't know anything mm. about Paris plays you, but in my mind, like a kid who just straight out of high school, talented, got a good look, um, making some dope music, all the shit that an artist should be doing, he's able to do by himself. But now it's like the business side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because that's the hardest thing to learn is, is the music business. And there's so little, so few options right now to be working with someone uh, who actually understands hip hop and R&B in, mm-hmm. in, in Vancouver. Like, like um, you know, some people are assigned to like Blueprint for a management deal. And then you have like Chaos Club. But then... The list starts to get running out real, real, real fast after that. And you're like, go, oh, I don't know what to do. So once we can have more infrastructure built out here and uh, more people who can actually put on or, or just connect dots, like actually connect dots for Vancouver artists, um, mm. that'll help a lot. Because um, at the then, end of the day, it's a business, like you said. Man. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, there's, there's the talent and, you know, the pro- uh, production side of it, but then there's the management. And- yeah. Yeah. Business. And, and it's all, and you know, it's all about how do I take this brand and how do, how do we make money from this brand? And there's a lot of, um, obviously Toronto's like on a huge wave right now. They have like what, three or four of the biggest artists in the world live in Toronto or, or from Toronto. Right. Crazy. So that helps your brand a lot already. But then also Toronto has hood politics, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. so instant, instantly, that's really, really, really marketable. Like the world, we love hearing about hood shit. We love hearing about people getting robbed. We love hearing about people getting shot. Like mm. it's like, it's interesting to us. I don't know why it is, but like just human psychology, people have an interest in that, mm. let alone actually being from that city and like knowing the ins and outs of like the politics between different hoods, you know? So if I'm, if I'm an A&R and I want to make quick money, I can find an artist who is on one block and I know, you know, that block has beef with other blocks. Um, And we start, you know, it's able for us to start marketing it because Mm. we know how to do that. Whereas like, it's trickier for an A&R to come to a place like Vancouver where 
okay, yeah, like <laughs> there ain't shit going on. You know? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> I, I, I guarantee you. Well, I don't want to say I guarantee you. That's disrespectful because I don't. Know that <laughs> but in a year, of, you know, like there's, I guarantee you, there's like way more shootings in a city like Toronto um, in like a month than there is in Vancouver mm. in a year. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so it's just like it's a brand new thing to learn. And one thing that I've really truly learned in the music industry is, you know, it's most people don't know what the fuck they're doing. So they just want to like take something that's already worked and just like try and copy it a bunch of times mm. uh, until it stops working. So it's a new thing to do where it's like, okay, what's the angle for Vancouver? Like, how do we pitch and promote artists from this city? Um, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the tricky one. That's the tricky. That's, that's really interesting. You say that man about the hood politics. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's, it's a real thing. And a lot of people don't, um realize it but uh you're totally right it's it's something it's an aspect it's a real aspect of yeah, the industry huge, man. Yeah. yeah like like you know like I, th- I think literally every major city um there's there's hood politics involved in each mm-hmm. of those cities like obviously new york obviously la mm-hmm. atlanta like there's there's actual like major hood politics and it's just a it's a really easy thing to because it's been done before so the, the blueprints map laid out for a business to be like okay we'll just do exactly what these guys did and our artists should become successful mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's just like it's it's a kind of like comical man like when people like there's a few guys here that like rap about like fucking you know, being <laughs> just like being yeah. hard, like hard and shit. And it's just like, um, man, the hardest shit you've ever done is not pay for fucking bus fare. You know, going yeah, bro, the, I've, just heard, that. You, I've heard that. I've heard that. Oh, like, yeah, hey, your parking tickets are late, fam. Like, stop this. Like, facts, that's, bro. That's and like, it. it's just like, you know, like I understand what you're trying to do. Like you said, like you know, copying different things from different, uh, different uh, music. But it's just like you, you just got to be genuine with who you are and where you're from and um just go with that and i feel like like that's one thing that really gravitated me towards your music man it's just like you don't you're just very genuine man transparency in your music and i can i can sense that and i'm sure like that's why a lot of people that's why a lot of people you know like your music at the end yeah. of the day because you, yeah. you just you're just you you just can't you just keep it 100 you don't you're not trying to be someone you're not you know yeah no and 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 it's like 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 we said earlier man i I feel like it's just easier for people to really relate to something that's real Mm. um because at the end of the day you have an honest opinion on it it's like yo i fuck with this this is dope Mm. i like this cat i like what he's saying or you're like no i don't fuck with it but then that's it like there's no there's no games behind it you know what i mean like Mm. there's no like there's no freaking smoke and mirrors to what i'm trying to do is i just want you to like either fuck with what I'm doing or, or don't. And like, I, I, I don't want it to be, have to be associated with another artist to do that. And I, I'm really proud of what I've been able to, to do so far, just cause it's literally just me, bro. Like I don't have like a manager. I don't have anyone on the team. It's just oh, literally- well, You don't even have a manager, eh? No, 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 no. Right. So it's, it's literally just me. And so like, I see a lot of other artists with, you know, like five, six people teams and that's great. That's like something that I want to have and I'm, I'm aspiring to have. But um, for me to be able to even be in the same conversation as them, it's like, wow, it's, that's, that's pretty humbling for me, dog. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of where I'm at right now. Mm. Yeah, man. You're, you had a great 2020 and 2021. We'll get into your uh, future goals and your, uh, you know, the works right now and for 2021. But since this is a primarily a basketball podcast, I gonna ask you, man, do you watch ball? Like, are you into that? Yeah, 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 man. I, yeah, I watch, yeah. I watch a lot of basketball. It's okay. tough, right? Because it's tough sometimes. You know, you gotta find the right streams and shit. But oh man, uh, I got, I got hella streams, man. They, they get, set. they get taken down within they a week, do, but man. fuck. Yeah. They get taken down. That's the thing, bro. So you just got to be on it, and like, yeah. but yeah, I, uh, I, I try to keep up with basketball, man. Like, um, I got. It's. It, I mean, obviously, like at the end of the day, I want Raptors because I'm Canadian, so I want I want Raptors mm-hmm. to do well. Okay. But uh, because we're looking like we're not gonna have a great season at all. I don't it, know what's going on, man? Bro, it's, <laughs> it's, looking, it's looking terrible, man. But um, I don't know. I think the dope thing is it's just like, bro, I, I love the narratives too in, in the NBA, man. Like the storylines and shit. Bro, so many so. storylines, man. So it's so crazy, man. They've they've done such a crazy job of marketing that. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like 
I think if I was to pick like an MVP for this year, I'm probably going to go with Luca. I think he's going to have a crazy year. Or I'm going to go with hey. Steph. Steph is playing lights out right now. Shh, the thigh guy is something else, man. Both of those guys. But fuck. It's like when you watch like these guys play, man, it's like it's almost weird how good they are, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's like you can't even like imagine how like they're that like fucking elite at what they do, right? Yeah. Um and like I I I I'm I play like freaking pickup basketball, bro. Like I'm not like a baller at all. Word. But like it's it's crazy to me when like you play with a couple guys who go to like freaking like Langara or something and it's just like you can see how much faster they pass on the ball around and they're moving. Word. You know what I'm saying? And then and then you start thinking like shit, bro, like this isn't even like anywhere near like nba level bro you know so like, you, start, you start watching it and you're like Shit, these guys are moving so fast bro and it's crazy bro like it's it's just a different game yeah, man i have to talk with a lot of people too and i'm just like because i played a langer last season dope. um if you didn't know so shout out langer um, okay dope, dope. i didn't actually didn't know that it's funny that you know, that, yeah that's that's funny um but yeah man it's just like like it's post-secondary basketball it's not like the highest level of you know basketball it's, it is college basketball though so um i always so, talk about i go go ahead go ahead i'll ask you after man it's just like i always like talk about it like man, if we were playing an nba team how much fucking you know how many how many points would we score and it's like we yeah. wouldn't even score like 20 man it's just it's just a different game but 100 percent, man and yo it's it's crazy it, what like I, just, I, just always, I always wonder man like what the nba is gonna look like and like 15 years bro because it's almost common now to see like a freaking six five point guard six six point guard bro and it's like yo who are these freaks of nature bro where are these kids coming from man it's a whole different game these guys are yeah. like you got like seven footers fucking getting like getting in their bag and shit fucking yeah, they, pulling they, up they can, they can like handle it now and shit it's like what's going it, on bro it's, it's crazy. crazy it's crazy and it's cool because like you there's so many like parallels from like sport basketball to like music you know just like the different trends um you know just like how certain certain players certain artists like approach their craft um shit like that man and do you have anyone in the nba that you would compare your music to in terms of like approach you know mindset oh man uh Dame yeah. Dollar, man. Dame, Dame Dollar. Dollar, okay. Dame Dollar, man. Just a dog, you know. Just, just, just yo. I, I just, I just, I just, I love the hunger, bro. That's, I love, I love Dame's hunger, bro. Mm. Uh, yeah, yo, yo. Do you think he's gonna stay in Portland in like two years? Do you think Portland's gonna trade him? I think for him, man. I think he's a loyal guy. I think that's just who he is. Yeah. Um, he, if he has the option of staying in Portland for the rest of his career, I think he will. And unless he does get traded um but i mean like portland man i I, they should be better than what they are man i feel like they're underachievers in a sense um portland's a dope city though man i love portland yeah yeah that portland is a very dope city man um yeah i I don't know what it is with their team dog like it's just something yeah, they're, miss, they're missing something. I don't they're know, missing man. something, but they, they've had an okay start this year. It's been all right. We'll see yeah, how it yeah. goes. Yeah. I, I mean, my Lakers are just where just where they need to be. You know, I'm a yeah, Lakers just, guy. Just dominated, man. The off season moves, man. Like Montrez, so, Harrell, Dennis. Fuck. You know, I think Dennis Shooter is huge, bro. Like that's a much needed addition to the team. Dog. He's so tough, man. He's a dog. That guy's yeah. a dog. Yeah, I actually. love Schroeder, man. Yeah. Um, he's, he's he is very tough, man. Yeah. Um, who else is nice? Oh, what's that cat's name? Um, shoot, man. Hold on one second, man. Yeah, younger, younger dude. Younger dude. He just had a break. He's like having a breakout year right now, man. Oh shit! There's so many, man. So he's got uh, that hyphenated name. Oh, shy Gildas Alexander. No, no, no. Plays for Lakers. Plays for Lakers. Plays for Lakers. Lakers. Oh, Taylor Horan Tucker. Yeah, man. Yo, he's tough. Hooping right now. Yeah, I think yeah. he should be taking Kuzma's minutes because Kuzma pisses me off, man. Yeah, That's, <laughs> Kuzma. I think the biggest thing is that I watch Kuzma and I. I just don't see toughness. Yeah, it's just sort I, of 
Yeah, I, I just you, see like a little kid sometimes. Huh? Yeah, you sense that too, huh? Yeah, but he's like what? He's like six nine, six ten. So I, I get it. Like the the upside of having him on the court, I understand why you'd want to give him the minutes. Mm. And and he sometimes he's, he does he does good shit on defense, I guess. Yeah, he's long. He, he can move. Yeah, he's needed. Decent, decently athletic. No, he he's got some. He has some moments, but man, most of the time that guy just fucking pisses me off. Like, yeah, fuck me too, bro. Me too. <laughs> me man, too. man, but, Van City needs a fucking team, straight up. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. I was gonna say though, having Marcus Gasol is good for uh, for Kyle Kuzma though. Mark. Um, yeah, having him there, it just having someone with more experience and also a really good passer is going to give him some really good looks. Mm. Uh, I think that's, that's huge for it's going to be huge for him this season. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Marcus always like a no bullshit type of guy. Like, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like he's just a dude who loves beer, bro. Yeah, he's just a beauty. <laughs> he's, one of, he's, one, he's one of those white boys you go over to his place and he's probably got like a, two beers right now. <laughs> I feel like that's who he is, man. Just gets fucked up on beer. Yeah, I love that. 100%, man. <laughs> those, those are the funniest. Those are the fucking coolest dudes, man. Beauty. 100%, dog. Just get absolutely smashed on beer. I'm not a beer guy, though, man. I was, but I'm over it, man, at some point. I mean, I think my thing with beer is it just yeah, I just get too bloated, dog, and I feel uncomfortable and shit the next morning. Like I feel like if I if I drink like hard hard liquor, it's just like I wake up, I'm good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So damn. Yeah, but Vancouver does need a team again, man. I I heard they're talking about bringing Memphis Grizzlies moving it to another region, um, something like that. I think Seattle's top priority right now, but. Um, Man, Vancouver, I definitely have some, has a market, man. They've been talking about it for fucking years now. Yeah, facts, man. Yeah, man. Um, so, man, I mean, um, we've talked for a bit now, and, um, you know, I'm not going to take any more of your time, bro, because I know you're a busy man and you, you got things to do. But before we go, bro, how – what do you have in store? I mean, you, you don't have to – um you know express like everything that you know you don't have to yeah no for sure bring out um, everything but i mean yeah. what, what's in the works bro um yeah right now i'm working on oh I, I, we finished i finished the project an ep with um vancouver r&b singer i am the living mm-hmm. um it's just a collaboration project we just wanted to do something fun and also also just like um, create some dope content, make some dope visuals for it. Mm. So um, that project's gonna be coming out in a few months. Um, there's some more singles coming out from it. Um, and really, the goal after that is to finish up my project with Chin um, and and release that. Mm. So that's the big one for me that I'm working on and trying to get like a major kind of uh, I shouldn't say a major, but I'm trying to get some kind of placement. You know, as far as like a whether it be a distribution deal or or be an independent label signs it, um, just to have some actual marketing dollars as opposed mm-hmm. to working off of, you know, my bank account and like trying to make shit work that way. Right. Um, there's gonna be a lot more to do if I can have that kind of access to funds. Mm-hmm. So um, so that's really what I'm working on right now, and I'm really pushing towards having a great. 2021 last year was dope for me man like uh i felt like i took a, like a lot of jumps forward in my career mm. um so i just want to kind of maintain that consistency and maintain that energy and just see where this year takes us um but yeah i got i've shot three music videos and um you know so three music videos will be coming out this year plan on shooting a few more as well so Damn, okay so two two projects and three music videos yeah so far yeah Yeah, man well bro i'm a fan i you know i 100 percent support i love what you're doing your transparency man like and keep keep going bro i think you got something in there so i think you got um a lot going for you and man appreciate you bro Appreciate yeah, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks for this, bro. I appreciate the time, man. This is yeah, dope. man. Shout out for Daniel for connecting us, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, man. Real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, oh, bro. Man. All right, brother. We'll you keep take in care. touch. Thank Definitely, you. Definitely, homie. Peace, peace out. Peace.